Okay, what can I be evasive on? Do you have any uh, good stories, opening day stories from your story career that you can... Wow. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, every, uh, every season is going to be something new. Um, it's exciting that way. You never know, uh, you never know what's going to happen. Um, you know, weather generally plays a role in the opener. Um, that can be a wild card. Um, so, you know, backups become important. You know, even, you know, last year we saw that even though it was a night game. I mean, we had rainstorm last year. There's always that uncertainty of an opponent that um, is the opening game that, you know, you're not 100% sure what you're going to see on offense or defense and things like that. It's 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 exciting time for fans. It's exciting time for, for coaches and players. In terms of playing time, how much do you have to uh, remind yourself that this is the, the first of 16 and, and maybe more, especially with a guy like Fletch who hasn't played in the preseason? If he does play, how much do you have to sort of monitor his snaps? Yeah, I mean, we did that last year with Brandon Graham a little bit. Um, you know, you only get 16 of them. So, I mean, there's two sides of that coin, you know. it's We're not we're not playing 162. Um, you know, not playing basically 82? 82 in basketball. Um, you know, so it, it does. It, I, obviously, every game has urgency. I mean, I've, I've always – somebody told me one time a loss in the NFL is like a 10-game 10, 10 losing streak in Major League Baseball. And how would you feel if you just lost 10 games in a row? I never really thought of it that way. But anyway, th that, that's a long way of saying every game's precious. Um, but particularly our defensive line, we are a rotation team. When, when we're at full strength and healthy, there have been times where we haven't been able to rotate quite as much as we wanted to. But um, you know, we're a rotation group trying to keep guys fresh and uh, to stay in the baseball analogies, keep guys coming out of the bullpen, you know, throwing heaters. You mentioned Brandon. Are there lessons you take from previous times learning how to manage players coming back? Yeah, I mean, I think we every every player is different. Um, every player has different injury, different conditioning level, plays a different position. I think you got to take them all on a on a case by case basis and um, good communication during the game. Like you know, give you an example. Last year we sort of had in mind. A certain number of snaps for Brandon in the uh, in the opener, um, but it was night game. Um, we were communicating throughout the game with him, and he was fresh and ready to go. And we also sort of rotated early in the game, so he was available late in that game. It was a close game, so I, th I think communication is key when it comes to those things too. Are you concerned at all with uh, Derek Barnett? Uh, whether he can be available, whether he can be ready, uh, since he hasn't practiced much. Oh yeah, we're concerned with everybody, um, but um, we got a long way to go till Sunday. We'll see where we'll see where everybody is, and um, you know we have we have um, good depth at that position. I think whoever we put out there will be able to get the job done. Jim, uh, Malik and Fletcher both talked about how uh, they feel like the other one's going to bring out the best in them. Uh, they just started practicing together, I guess, this week. What, what do they mean when they say that? How do you feel like they can kind of complement each other? Both guys are tough one-on-ones for guards and centers. And, um, you know, generally center's going to favor one way or another, which a lot of times ends up being toward Fletch, which opens up one-on-one -on -one opportunities. And let, there's less ways to get help to defensive tackles than there's defensive ends. You can keep a tight end in. You can chip a running back. But, um, you know, you can – you know, one-on-ones are, you know, much more important. And we've done a lot of stuff to try to create one-on-ones for, um, for Fletch. Just having, um, you know, just having Malik out there helps to create some one-on-ones for him. And I'd, I'd throw Timmy Jernigan into that um, um, mix as well. You know, Timmy's done a really good job of rushing this whole summer and uh, has made a lot of plays in there. So, you know, we got a lot of guys inside that can, that can win matchups in there. And that's, and that's not even, you know, that's not even having to be creative, so to speak. That's just putting the guys on the field and letting the offense try to choose which guy they want to uh, spend more attention with. Um, the thing, the thing is with, and particularly with Malik, because Timmy's a little different skill set. Um, but Malik and Fletcher are so damn tall and long. You know, a lot of times those guys can be blocked, but they're still in the rush. Their arms are so long; they can affect the quarterback. Um, you know, things like that. They can restart their rush. Um, it'll be um, it'll be uh, it'll be a fun time to watch those guys rush on Sunday and throughout the year. You mentioned the uncertainty of opening day, uh, but this is a team you're used to playing twice a year. Uh, Jay's been there for a while. 
Uh, but they do have a lot of different skill position people offensively. Yeah. How, how much can you take from from last year and years past with those new players? Yeah, I mean, you know, scheme scheme changes every year. You know, if you have a, a coach that's been there for a long time, um, you know, scheme changes every single year. And I'll just give you an example what um, what uh, Andy Reid is running at Kansas City now um, doesn't resemble the West Coast offense that he brought here to Philly in 2000, 99, yeah, um, in 1999. And that wasn't an overnight thing. It wasn't one year they decided to completely change. Every every year there's new wrinkles. Every year you're trying to take advantage of a certain skill set of a player or a certain new scheme or, you know, something that was a trend in the NFL. So, um, you know, I think that I think that you know Washington would be no different there. They do have some different players mixed in. A new quarterback, um, a runner back, a running back that we didn't see last year. Um, some new, uh, some new wide receivers. Um, you know, a couple new offensive linemen potentially too. So um, there's there's always that. You know, new players, and then also, um, you know, preseason tends to be, you know, uh, preseason games tend to be a, a bit of a cat and mouse game of of working on new things in training camp, but not showing them in preseason games. We do it. Everybody does it. So um, what you see on film isn't necessarily what you're going to get. You have to, and I think the way you combat that is you have players that know your scheme, they know how to adjust, and uh, you do a good job in between series when people throw new things um, at you, and, and you can handle things that go along. Um, I, I don't, I don't see this as a game that'll be won by scheme, though. This, is, this will be won by, um, you know, players f uh, fundamentally playing within the scheme and doing their job within the scheme. It's not going to be the scheme that makes a difference offensively or defensively. What's your understanding of, of what happened with uh, Nigel Bradham around the fourth preseason game? No, I'll just let Doug handle that. That's a head coaching thing. Um, Malcolm Jenkins, he never really comes out of a game. I think he played every snap last year. Have you reached the point with him where you want to get him some relief or maybe you, you just can't afford to have to take him out of a game? Um, I don't know. I mean, like to be up uh, 28 points with about uh, with about six minutes to play, and you know, put a hat on him. Um, you don't always have that luxury in the NFL. Um, he's a he's a supremely conditioned player. He's a, he's a great pro, one of the best pros I've been around in my career. Um, takes notes in a meeting like he's a rookie. Um, works in practice. I mean, wears out the meeting room, wears out the tape. Um, you know, and um, so he's ready for that. He's he's you know got it in his um, DNA to get ready to play every snap. And you know, there's some um, you know, I mean, he, he, that that's just that's just wired in him. I don't know that. I mean, there 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 are times where you know we'll empty the bench at an end of a game, but most games in the NFL are close. You usually don't have that luxury. I, I know this, it's a comforting feeling to have him on the field because he can play so many different roles for us. What kind, of, what kind of running back is Darius Geis? What have you seen from him? I know he didn't play last year. Yeah, he didn't get much in the preseason. It's hard. I mean, I think that's going to be yet to be determined. He's got some, he's got some, uh, some power to him, um, appears to have some multidimensional skills. Um, they're a big zone stretch team. It looks like he can run that play for them. Um, you know, after after that, you know, he's got some ability in the passing game. But you know, there's not a whole lot of. You know, they've limited his touches in the um, in the in the preseason games. Uh, we'll be ready for him. At corner, uh, Doug said that uh, uh, that uh, Jones and and and, uh, and Darby are the top guys on the outside when Darby's healthy. And Douglas will still play. How do you find ways to play Douglas if those two are the top guys on the outside? Yeah, we're gonna play that close to our vest. Um, you know, no sense. I mean, I, I don't think we gain any advantage, sort of, you know, letting Washington know about what our rotation would be, who's playing right, who's playing left, who's playing the nickel, who's playing the dime, who's, you know, all those things. I think that uh, we're best off just, um, you know, having you guys find out the same time uh, Washington does Sunday at one. Mentioned that you have a lot of I'll say that anybody that's on our 53 has a role, and anybody that's on our 46 on game day is has a role. And if you're a backup, that's still a role, and it's still an important role. And I think one thing is, over the course of last year, I mean, I think we've seen um, everybody can, everybody's going to 
have to contribute at some point. So we got confidence in the guys that uh, made our roster. You mentioned that you have a lot of depth at the defensive end. How's the back end of that rotation coming in, coming together? And is there somebody st- you know s- separating from those guys who come in as subs? No, I mean I like. I mean I, I take. When, when you say back end, I really don't consider Vinny Curry that. I think he's an important rotational player for us and um, has played good winning football for us. And um, a full confidence that, you know, he can do anything. But we do have some young players there, draft pick and Sharif and um, Sweat, who got a little bit of experience last year. And, and um, Day Day that got some experience last year and made some plays. So, um, you know, th- those guys those guys probably aren't going to have a, a super heavy lift, at least if we, if we stay relatively healthy at the position, but they will be counted on to play quality reps when they're asked to. And, you know, I mean, when, when, when you do that and, you know, it's a long drive and a guy's got to go play a couple plays, every play, I mean, even if you're only playing five snaps in the game, 15 snaps in the game, every one of those plays can turn out being the play of the game. So, um, you know, so the urgency for those guys is there, but we got confidence that those guys will be able to fill role and be counted on Sunday. Last year, you had Sydney playing, you know, in, in the nickel position and everything like that. And I was just kind of curious as to, you know, he seemed to be playing a lot on the outside, training camp, preseason games and everything. Like what you see from him to maybe make that transition back to the outside. I, I know it's obviously a position he's familiar with. Yeah, I mean, he played it in college. He can he can do both. I mean, pretty much all of our guys in the secondary cross train somewhere. Um, you know, he played nickel at the beginning of last year, finished um, at outside corner. So, um, you know, depending on how it all shakes out, matchup wise, um, injury wise, everything else, um, you know, we got confidence in both of those positions. A couple more minutes. Camus out of the lineup uh, during training camp or the preseason. Who who linebackers stepped up? You know. Feel comfortable opposite Nigel. This yeah, there's nobody that's on our 53 that we don't feel comfortable with, and uh, we have confidence to put all those guys in the game. You got a little mix of players there. You got a undrafted rookie and TJ, and you got a, a salty vet in LJ. Wow, we got a lot of J's. Um, Day Day, yeah, um, yeah, we LJ, DJ, yeah, we got there's probably more of those. GJ. Coaching staff, yeah, uh, you get confused after a while. But um, uh, <laughs> go another one, uh, White Snake, um, <laughs> the Snake, the Snake. Um, he's played a lot of good football for us, and we won football games on a playoff run. You know, with all those guys. So, if you're on the 53, you have gained our confidence as coaches, and we're not afraid to put those guys on the field in any situation. And again, if you're on the 46, you have a role on Sunday. Might be goal line, might be short yards, it might be first play of the game. You got to go out there and play because somebody, somebody got injured. So we, we, those, those, uh, every position is valuable, and they all contribute to the success uh, of our team. Jim, I, I know you said you have confidence in the entire uh, group, but to have a couple veterans at safety as backup players uh, is that much of a luxury for you? Especially we always talk about. Malcolm's versatility, maybe being able to move him around because you have those two guys. Yeah, I'll stay in nicknames: Dayho, um, Sip. You know, those guys. Those guys do give you a lot of confidence to be able to go in and play any role. Again, might be the first play of the game. You know, guy guy goes out and you know tweaks something on the first play of the game, or you know gets flagged on the concussion protocol on the first play of the game, and somebody has to go play every snap. Um, you know, guys that have. Um, I, mean, you, you, and I, I, I do appreciate your your point of view there. There's a difference between gaining the, the confidence of the coaches and also having been there and done it before. And I think both of those guys bring that uh, bring that dynamic. Um, they've been really good additions to our uh, to our backfield. Thanks, guys. Okay.
How y'all doing? Good. Mike, Carson Wentz has talked a lot about his preparation in this offseason, whether it's his diet, nutrition, workouts that he's been going through. Have you seen that in the product on the field during practices? Um, I think he looks extremely fit. Uh, he certainly has excellent stamina right now. His arm strength is, is excellent. He's taken every throw that we've asked him to take, every rep that we've asked him to take. Uh, from preseason, um, you know, back into to OTAs and all that. So, uh, in terms of his preparation, uh, I think he's right exactly where we'd like him to be. And um, I think you'd have to ask him specifically, but I would think his answer would be the same. Yeah. What do you think Big B is transitioned so well to right guard? Well, I think you know he's been here for a while, you know, and and he knows the system and the terminology and the communication. And those guys have played a lot of ball together, so. I think you ask any old lineman, that's that's a really big part of it, just uh, in terms of who's who's playing next to you. Um, so there's there's a lot of comfort there for him, and and he's a versatile player. He's a good football player. Uh, he's got size and and can play with some power in there at guard. So um, yeah, he's he's done a really good job here. How has Miles Sanders done in blocking protection? Miles, Miles has dialed in on his, on his protections. I mean. Um, just like all running backs in the NFL, they're, they're going to be put in some challenging um, situations where they got to block some some backers that are running downhill on them that are that are big guys and got bad intentions. But uh, I know he's he's capable. With Miles, where have you seen him improve most since he got here? Oh shoot, um, I think uh, he's done everything that we've asked him to do. Uh, he's integrated himself into the system. I think he's comfortable. Uh, with our running game, you know, certainly uh, as you transition from college to the NFL, you know, he's he's got to get used to, you know, how we're blocking the plays and and the and the reads that that we're asking him to make in the running game. You know, Jeff brought up the protection thing where he's probably got more responsibility in terms of protection, and uh, he's he's very uh, diligent about doing that, and he's on that. And um, when we throw in the ball out of the backfield, he's he's caught it really well. So. Um, you know, in, in all phases, we, we got a lot of confidence in Miles. How much do you talk through the, the running back rotation going into the game and, and what your, your targets are for each guy and how much of it is sort of uh, figuring it out during the game? Yeah, I think it'll be, I mean, we, we, we know that we want to get everybody involved and we got, uh, you know, a, lo a lot of capable guys at the, in the running back room. Um, so it, it'll be a little bit of an evolution, but we want to try to get those guys involved in the game um, just like we've done over the last several years. So uh, I, I don't. I don't see it being a whole lot different here to start, and then it'll be probably on a week-to-week -week basis. As a follow-up to that, how is that determined? Is it is it based on on the formation? Is it based on the matchup, time of game? How do you determine that? Uh, probably not so much time time uh, on the clock or you know what quarter we're in, um, but more on just you know you know the schemes that we like um, that suits their skill sets, just like we do with. Uh, you know, a receiver or a tight end or anybody in, in a skill position and trying to put those guys in the best position uh, to utilize their skills, what they do really well, uh, based on the scheme that we have. Is that coming from Deuce or is it? I mean, he's the running back coach, so he certainly dri drives that, but it's not just Deuce alone. It's uh, a collaboration. Darius Rules is obviously very productive on the field, but having him back, what does he bring to, to the locker room, the, the running back room, and the offense, just from a, a lead by example? I think a, a certain amount of confidence and um, that's a that's a result of demonstrated performance. This guy's had a track record of tremendous amount of production. Um, so not only in his game, but in the guys around him, uh, he's played in all these games before. So it's certainly not going to be too big for him. It's just getting him to the game uh, where he's ready to go. Uh, so that confidence, uh, I think, you know, from you know mentioning Miles, talking about Miles, there's a there's a great leader sitting right in the room who's been doing it at a high level for a long time. So there's somebody there that he can emulate uh, sitting next to him every day in a meeting room or out there in the running back individual drills and uh, you know take that take that to teamwork and then into the game. So uh, in a lot of different ways beyond just the playmaking ability that, that he's uh, an asset for us. Warden Dagger, you have a lot on your mind right now. But going into I do? the game. <laughs> <laughs> go, go How did you know game. that? I can huh? see it. Huh? <laughs> but, but going into a game with a couple of rookies who could be playing very significant roles like Miles and JJ, are you kind of excited to let them loose and watch them on the big stage in a real game? Yeah, I'm excited to watch the offense go, you know, really. Everybody to get out there, Merrill, and, uh, and, uh, and go play a game. I think we're all ready for it. Um, we put a lot into it. We're invested in it. The guys uh, are focused, got great energy. And, um, you know, we're excited. We got an NFC East rival coming in here on opening day in our stadium. And, 
you know, we're excited about the season. We're ready to kick it off. What did you emphasize this offseason to help ensure fast starts? Well, I think, um, you know, every, every, every week, every season, you want to start fast, and we know that. Um, but last year's team is last year's team, and this is this year's team. So we're focused on our team right now and what we need to do to, uh, to, to play our very best football, um, to, uh, you know, execute out there each and, each and every play really throughout the course of the game. So um, it's a fair question based on the results last year, but that was last year's team, and, and we're really focused just on, on what we got going on this year. Hey, Mike, now that you're in regular season mode, obviously Doug talked about the skill position players. He called them well-oiled machines yesterday. Uh, you guys have a lot of skill position players. You said you want to get everybody involved. It's a great problem to have, but when you're game planning, do you, is it in a weird way more difficult to try to get everybody involved? Uh, I wouldn't call it difficult, but we have to be mindful of it for sure. I mean, we, we don't want to just, um, you know, subjectively just pick plays and then say all of a sudden, well, somebody, you know, he, he disappeared in the game. He, you know, he didn't get a chance to impact the game. So uh, we're certainly very mindful of that. And um, sometimes that means that, you know, the process takes a little bit longer than, than it otherwise might, but um, we feel like it's worth it in the end. Are you changing your location during the game? Or are you still at I'll be on the field. Yeah. In, in uh, Dilworth's case, Doug said he needed to be ready in, in case he's one of the seven on game day. Um, that would seemingly require him to, to be able to play both sides. How is he coming along on the right side if he's forced into action? Well, I mean, we'll, we'll only know that if he's got to do it, really, because um, he's focused primarily on the left, but he's trained on the right. And um, so that's – it's easy, say, easy to say, but probably not as easy to do, um, which we talk about the value of V, who's been able to do it. And uh, over the course of his career here, Isaac, um, you know, guys like that, that that can play right-handed, play left-handed, play inside, play outside. So uh, I think he's getting his first exposure to that. Uh, we obviously have a lot of confidence in, in Andre uh, as a tackle. Um, that's why we drafted him so high. And uh, I know that when he gets out there, he's going to do really well. Mike, what's it like preparing for a Ryan Kerrigan twice a year and a guy like that who can literally change the game and somebody you have to be accountable for in every play? Yeah, he, he's a... Uh, He's a rolling ball of, of butcher blades, man. This this guy is a, a heck of a player. Um, you know, in all phases, run game. Um, he certainly, uh, you know, creates and generates a, a pass rush. We've got to be very conscious of, of where he's at. Uh, a heck of a player, has a high motor, and uh, and he's smart. You know, you're not going to fool him on a lot of stuff. So he's one of those guys that uh, we certainly spend time talking about and, um, you know, want to make sure that we got the right guys on him. Jim was just mentioning that offensive schemes change over time. Uh, based on the last couple of years here, is, is there a trend for your offense and the scheme and where it's going? Yeah, I think that we evolved, you know, certainly based on the, on the uh, you know, available uh, talent. So, um, again, trying to put, put those guys in the, in the best possible position for them to do what they do well. Um, whether, a, you know, a pass concept changes or, you know, run concept uh, changes a little bit. We focus more on one than, than the other, you know, from, from year to year basis. I think that's, that's true for sure. Okay. Thanks, Coach. Golly. All right. Ball, yeah. 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 That's an old uh...